Alrighty, what is up everybody? Aurovolp is here, and I'm do gonna just do a quick tutorial just to um, use Ant Terrain Landscape to generate Minecraft style terrain. Yeah, sorry if my voice is a little raspy, I'm not used to doing any recordings, and I'm gonna try and make it as short as possible to save as much data, that way I can be on engine a lot longer than I normally am. Anyway, let's get straight into this, we'll just check, move that thing out of the way there. I zoomed it in so that it's um, a lot cheaper to upload a lower sized file video than it is to upload the full um, 1080p resolution. Anyway, we'll hop straight into this. Simply generate a landscape. If you haven't already had this in your settings, just go to File, User Preferences, and it should be down in Add Mesh, which you could ju go to just Add Mesh or just search down until you find it. Then you right click on the make sure it's ticked and then it should be activated and it should already be activated once you click it um, but you can still do save user settings anyway back to here ah, we've got this little little lump I guess you could call it a landscape but it's, it's just the basis essentially but all we need to do is just change some settings change the subdivisions for 100 for this one that'll change the amount of faces that's on it we'll change the mesh size to 10. Yeah, we'll do it at 10. <coughs> and we'll change it to 5. Um, the, this depth size shows um, how or how many ridges are in the terrain essentially. So the more depth you have, the more resolution it has. Like it'll be a lot easier to notice if we change the. Whoop, move it over here again. Um, let's change this to 10. Uh oh. Did something crash? No. Oh, sorry. Just played up for a second there. Yeah. <sighs> now, anyway. I'm, like, like I said, I'm not used to recording, so forgive me if I'm all not speaking thingamajig. Yeah. Anyway, we'll just change the plateau to something higher, like 5. No, we'll change it to 20. That way, if we change the height of the terrain like that, it's not going to cut off like that. Anyway, back to 20. And yeah, for this one, we'll just have it as a... Uh, yeah, we'll just do a moderately flat terrain. You can always change that later. Um, actually, now for this one, we may as well do a height of 6. That way I can show you when we do the cube, it'll be a lot easier to display. Anyway, with the depth, why isn't it similar? Yeah, sorry, I must have, uh, when I moved this, it selected off onto Bandicam. And yeah, anyway, the depth here, what the heck? Ah, sorry. That's one of the things too, when you have, when you're still messing around with the settings, it basically does it to the, ah, oh, crap. Yeah. Anyway, once you have the settings down, it's okay to, to delete it and recreate it because it'll maintain the same settings that you gave it. Anyway, the depth just basically shows... Um, well, depth is basically the resolution of it. Like, if you just change the depth to more, it'll get more and more thing. But again, the, um, the greater the uh, subdivision, the, um, the greater the mesh will actually be. But again, it'll be a lot slower. So for the sake of this one, we'll put it to just 5. Even though 5 will still be a little bit bumpy for this one. But I could always change the noise size. Anyway, you can mess with the settings any way you like to get your desired terrain. But, um, you know, the preferred settings is um, lower depth and higher noise to get a lot smoother, smoother terrain. Again, this is up to you. We'll just move this little crappy little point lamp thing that's there by default which I should actually remove later and save the thing. Anyway, now that we've got the just the base terrain that you want, now all we have to do for this is select it, go to this panel here, give it a nice particle system, change the start and end to 1 and you see it's already got some particles there, change the type to grid, change the resolution to the same amount as your um your subdivisions, in this case 100, and yeah, then there's just 
throwing a hissy fit. It's probably because I've got all these things open as well as Bandicam. And now, as you can see, it's got um, got some particles there. All we need to do now is get a cube for it to generate. And for this one, because it's a little bit steep, we're going to extrude that. Let's see, extrude by two. And then we'll do, what is it, Shift R, Control R to repeat. Oh, no, nah, it's, uh, I just did undo. Um, two. And then Shift R is um is a short is a very useful shortcut to where you can repeat your previous action, in which case extruding and then moving down by two. And we'll do that four times, why not? Now we'll just switch to material mode for this so we can give our cube some material. And I gave it a material. I've got my node panel down here, but you can always change to it when you open it up, which you can also, you know, if you were to change this display to something else, just simply go to here and Node Editor. Yeah, some of you may know it and some of you may not, that's why I went to explain it that way. Those that don't, don't have to be like, oh no, I'm lost, I can't tell what thing. <sighs> yeah, first recording, yeah, I'm bored, so... I want to get this out of the way as quick as I can, but I'm talking, I'm kind of defeating the purpose of everything, so... Anyway, back to the node editor. Um, it already should have that by default. What we do is we give it a texture, an image texture, connect the the image texture to the diffuse. Um, this is, of course, doing it in cycles, which you can toggle by going up to cycles render, which I should have explained first, but... Yeah, you can always go back on the video if you want to, even though that's... <sighs> yeah, and seven minutes on the clock. Holy crap. i better stop rambling on. Anyway, better do this a lot quicker. Anyway, we'll open, go to 1.8 MC Textures, Blocks. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll do just sand for this. Um, because it'll take me a while to actually do the whole lot, but essentially... Oh, we'll just do stone. It's like a stone mountains biome. We'll do reset so that it spreads over the entire um, entire block UV map um, for each of the faces. So that should already be mapped there. And now that's done there. And just to display that they're all different, we'll give this one a different one. Ah, uh, we'll do that plus there. Add a new one. Material plus to make it a second material and then we'll just change this to dirt why not and we'll assign that by clicking assign of course and there we go and that's just for the sake of when it generates it'll show that the steep parts have that anyway now we've we've got the mesh selected again we've got a particle settings go down to object which shows that each of these particles will now meet as an object and we choose cube which is our cube um, and yeah by default it should um, be the same size but if not you can always change the size by going to this little thing here and as you can already tell it's slowing down my computer a lot but as you can see it now it's all nice and generated and yeah, there's just a few tweaks that we need to do. We need to turn off a mirror so that when it actually renders, if I just go to here, um, blah, go to here and put it in rendered mode, it shouldn't display that white thing. Actually, before we do that, let's go to material so we can see everything that's not the mesh. Ah, oh, this is slowing down my computer heaps. Anyway. Oh crap, 30 seconds left. Here we go, quickly. Um, add the sun. Come on. And rotate it like that. Ah, oh, damn it. Anyway, you get the point. Essentially, that's all generated now. And yeah, 8 seconds on the clock. Hopefully this helped in explaining how to convert ant terrain into MC terrain. Alright, bye.